Okay, what I have is a square. 2,000 by 2,000 pixels. Uh-huh. So, if I just say, uh, put a little, put a little pink. Oh, I said a little, a little pink in the corner. That is one two thousandth of the whole length of the square. I'll prove it. With two thousand height. Okay, so you probably didn't want proof. Anyways, what are we going to do with this thing? Well, I'm going to entertain myself until I grow tired and bored. So, hmm. This is all... Anything I put here is going to be canon to the stand, and also Silly Saga, and also, uh, Hard as a Rock, and, uh, Snorty and Snappy, and any other future series, and also Goofy Legends lore. So, without further ado, hmm, what should we, what should we put first? Um, okay, so, so, um, we gotta put, um, we gotta put, a, like, a circle. So, this is Guy. Uh-huh. So, that, that's, that right there is Guy. I should I should probably make him a lot smaller. Hold on. <laughs> All right. So this this guy in the corner is gonna be guy. Uh, he's pretty cool. He's shaded in, which is a, uh, the hierarchy of power. Um, any any shaded in circle means uh, you're basically like a king. Uh huh. So you you got the you got your like uh. Like your silly chair and stuff. We're like the the king. Yeah. You got his gamer chair. Yes. The king's throne is a gamer chair. And that right there, his name is uh, Gary, but we just call him King because he's king. And King looks like Guy and he's like, wow, you're cool. You must be from the royal family. And Guy's like, no, nah, I'm just doing my job, man. And King's like, how about you join the war? And guys, like, there's a war. Yes, because on the other side of the map, we have the uh, the hyper doll heads. So what the hyper doll heads do is they uh they like to cause ruckus and stuff. And then one day, when all the uh hold on, let me just uh it's not uh, intimidating enough. It's not that cool of an army. So the hyper doll heads like to form around each other and just go all over the place. But one day, this guy right here, no, 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 not you. This guy, you should know, let's do this one, he's furthest away. This guy forms a body, and everyone's like, whoa, how'd he do that? And then he got an arm, and then he becomes hyper doll. Actually, no. This, that's just the Minecraft world. His heart, his claws are black, black, black like the mug. And this one's the communist thing, like a pirate, like Foxy the pirate from Five Freds, Five Freds at night. Anyways, he is Hyperdoll, and that that that's canon. That's like the horseshoe of power that the Hyperdolls all use. Um, yeah. That does not look like a horseshoe. That looks like a... That is the stomach of power that all hyper dolls use to kill Flareon and kill Hyda and everything else. Can I... Whatever, good enough. And so, the stomach of power wants King over here dead. Oops. Anyways. So, King is like, Oh, grr. I'm a girl face. Grr. I'm gonna show how mad I am. And Guy's like, Oh... How'd you do that? Oh, wait, I did that too. And so, guy's like, wait, I know how to become stronger. How? Hold on, give me your face. Okay. Okay, how do we do it? Okay, so, let, let this guy do it. Okay, so I'm, go I'm, go I'm going to show you how to become strong. Anyway, so um, he establishes the lore that um, all all guys and kings and all the powers are strong, and noble, and will always rule the kingdom. Nothing, no hyper doll heads, no stomachs of power, no Goomba from Mario Bros. Wait, what? So there's a Goomba from Mario Bros. Um, he's pretty cool. He lives over here. 
Um, his name is Goomba. He's got big eyelashes. And then, uh, he's like, grr. I'm Goomba from Mario. And we're just gonna pretend like that last part didn't even happen. So, he has, like, this silly body. And... He has toad school, toad stool, toad, toad school legs. And so he's like, I'm Goomba from Mario Bros. Also, I'm communist. Yeah, that's, that's part of the thing, too. He's communist. I, I don't know how to draw the, like this. Something like that. And Goomba's like, I'm communist. And so, uh, he's going to list the power of the king. So King is pretty cool, actually. And Guy, Guy has a friend. His name is um, Guy but purple. And uh, he's pretty cool too. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we went there. This is, like, purple thing he has from, like, the FNAF 2. Anyways, he, he sees to the eye of the purple, and he's like, Purple guy, you are the man behind the slaughter. You must go kill all the hyper dolls. And purple's guy's like, no, I don't think I can do that, sir. I mean, uh, ooh, oi, ooh, oi. And the king's like, fine, I'll hire someone else to do it. I'll summon my own purple guy. And purple guy's like, wait, how do you do that? I mean, uh, 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 you know. And he's like, he summons, he summons, um, uh, so, uh, we have, uh, blue guy. And his name is actually, so, we have William Afton, now we have, uh, Ue Ulya, you know. So, um, this guy's color scheme is actually different. It goes like this. For some reason. And, uh, instead of a phone, he has a, he has a croissant. Actually, it's a banana. Because, I mean, I chose the wrong color. And so, um, what banana does is it's, like, a powerful weapon that can instantly kill at least one hyper doll in its vicinity. And, uh, also his badge is upside down for some reason. It's, like, pointing at the sky for some reason. It's, like, an, it's like an arrow. So, what's right above him is, a. Uh, is cloud. Let me explain what cloud does. So, cloud in the lore is like dark green, and he's like, grr. He has like the same eyebrows as a Goomba. He's like, grr. I'm cloud. <laughs> and then he rains on him. So that's cloud, and King is like, cloud will be very useful. But then Cloud becomes a uh, becomes Cloud Strife by accident. That's that's his hairstyle, right? Some yeah, that's, that's actually pretty accurate. So Cloud Cloud now Strife, which was his new name. Uh, hold on, let me give him his sword. This might take a while. So while we're while I'm giving him a sword, let me start explaining the lore that we've got up so far. So King is actually like immortal, and he's actually like eighty billion years old. King is actually stronger than Polywag would be in the canonical lore of Stanton. And yes, yeah, anyways, back to the thing. So C Cloud had a had an appearance in Super Rain Bros Ultimate or four, and then Ultimate. But in 4, he was, like, very broken because instead of his sword looking like that, it looks somewhat like this. And it was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. He had, like, nair potential. And so, the king uses the power of the, the gold all days to bring that back. And then, uh, then, uh, what's his name? Ooh, yeah, well, yeah, so I was like, how about a banana and cloud strife? Wait, we can make banana tree. And so that's what they do. They make banana tree. <laughs> Oops. This was lost during the war, actually. So that's what that's that explains what I just did there. 
Uh, yeah. He lost his, uh... He lost his arm during the war. It still bleeds for some reason, and no one has yet to patch it up. I feel very sorry for Blue Guy. Purple Guy is his, like, brother or something. I don't know. But then, they make Banana into Banana Tree. And then and Banana Tree goes real tall. Real tall. And he has, like, these cool little leaves coming out of it. And then, Bananas, of course. So we, they start stockpiling banana weapons. And then... So around here is when uh something in interesting happens. So the commie, communist Goomba, he declares war on an another faction up here called the, 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 the Singular Pixel. And so the Singular Pixel had to conquer some more territory. Starts up by going like this, then by this, then expands to five pixels wide, then it goes like this, then like this, and then... He reaches the Goomba, and he starts invading. Then he reaches the communist symbol, and starts invading. And he, he's basically he's basically taking over Goomba right now. And so, so the chain of roots actually gets broken, somehow. And the supply line is cut off, and s stumbles to death. Then it happens again. Everyone's like, what's happening? Then the communist symbol just vanishes, because it was connected to the chain now. And then, yeah, sadly, all of Goomba's face also disappears because of all that. <clears throat> but Goomba's still alive, of course. And so, Singular Black Pixel's like, what's going on here? And then, they make the dangerous move of doing that, which also eliminates the rest of the, oops, the rest of the chain of roots and whatnot. So, Singular Black Pixel has to gain some allies with the form of Singular Magenta Pixel. So, these two actually have been a very important uh, part in the war, which I'll get to about the 40 minute mark. So, so it's time for the, the Horseshoe versus the Banana Army. So, a banana falls from the tree. Uh huh. And then. It, de it decides to shoot the banana laser. So, what's the banana laser? Let me explain. Uh, it's like this laser cool thing. It, it like sends a beam of light. And it hits directly into it. Wow, ignore this. Don't know what that's about. Nobody knew what that's about. It hits directly into the horseshoe. Wait, is this still a horseshoe? I think it is, right? You know, whatever. I forgot what I made it now. Then it starts to disintegrate it, and and Hyperdoll, real Hyperdoll, not not the stupid head ones in the back, is like, I am Hyperdoll. I declare the shadows to be mine. The shadows declare me as their leader. I am the horribleness that rules over this dimension. Dimension hates me. And and then some for for some reason the screen editor got in, and then yeah. So now I can't even move the camera, and they just start killing everything. Like, it's okay, and then they just all die. So, anyways, back to the lore. There's, like, it's just, like, almost getting to the, to the thing. And it's, like, very, very ever so slightly making small little cracks. And, and then it reaches. And then it starts spewing. It, it floods over. And then it helps it break the, again. And it floods over. This all helps starts breaking more cracks in the ground, and then more cracks start appearing from the thing. And then... Oh, well, wait. The leg was consumed first. Then it goes for the stupid pirate foxy hook. And then the team pose body. And then the second arm. And then the head is destroyed. <laughs> The banana has to become too strong for its own power. Cloud Strife kills the other bananas, so they don't have to do it. But this banana was invisible, floating? Huh? So the bananas are now the strongest thing in the universe, apparently. And so, wait, hold on, let me just not put it on 60. It de declares war on Cloud Strife. And Blue Guy is noticing looks like a... Like... Hold on, let me just reset it. How 
dare you? And so, and so, uh, Banana dies. He's get, like, instantly killed by the Buster Sword. And Cloud. Cloud is lucky. He's not like, uh, the supply lines or Goomba. He actually recovers greatly. But he does not trust the bananas at all after this incident. So, he kills the banana tree once and for all, like this. This banana dies too. The supply line dies. And the horseshoe is taken out of its misery. The heads now have to deal with their own course, corpse of the hyper doll. So they decide to remove it like that. So, the king summons Guy once again. Guy, you must gain the power of this cool top hat I found. And Guy's like, okay, I guess. And then they, they change the shade so it's slightly noticeable. Oh my gosh. There we go. Look at that. Absolute drip. I would give him a Supreme logo that says something like a uh, sus or something. Susim. I don't know. Then the eye turns blue. Blue guy. Your destiny has been fulfilled. You must join us on the adventure to kill everything. Blue guy's like, what? There's no one else there left to kill. The Goomba's not Kami anymore. These guys are just mourning over the dead leader, who was the only one who was actually evil there. This leaf's still alive. So they kill the leaves, or like part of the leaves. But then, that, that, that destroys the Buster Sword. No! Add his arm too while we were at it. No! This guy's arm just, just starts bleeding even more for some reason. Someone's gotta get that checked. It's creating like a whole puddle for some reason. It's just starting to spill out into the rest of the world. <laughs> so, so, no, for real. Someone to get that checked. Anyways, Purple Guy has a plan. We must create factions for our own entertainment. And so, the country of Borobibia was, uh, was born. What did I just say? Borbobia. I think that's what I just said. Borbobia. So like a... Borbobia. Sure. Official spelling. Don't even know what that, suppo that sign's supposed to mean, but whatever. Borbobia. Repeating E decimal. Ignore that one. So the Borbobera is unaligned, except for the fact that there's a nearby Goomba. And they take notice of this, and like, they speak their national, like, natural language. Borbobera, And Goomba's like... And so Borbobera, you know, tries to contact somebody who would actually speak to them. So he goes over the guy, right? Guy's still here, King's still here, purple guy. Blue guy, Cloud Strike, the gang, and Barbara Bear is like, I need taxes. I mean Barbara Bear, 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 and so the country of Wyoming was made. <laughs> uh, Wyoming. So Barbara Bear does not really like Wyoming because they're invading on their land. So, Wyoming has to gather the alliance with uh, Cloud Strife so they can win. But Cloud Strife refuses. So, Wyoming's like, Grr, fine, I'll just uh, expand my borders this way. And they just take Goomba as their own for some reason. Yes, this series turned into this this turn this lore turned into mapping real quick. I'm sorry. So the hyper dolls, they surrender their lives so that their leader will be brought back. And this guy, 
he's the new leader now. So, gotta rebuild it now. <sighs> just gonna put the arm like right over here. It's still there. It's just off screen. Why is that T still there? There we go. Sorry if you heard that. Then the leg. So, Hyperdoll's back, right? So, these guys are really far away from uh, Hyperdoll. So, they wanted to get like a, a freaking midpoint. So, the midpoint was introduced. Actually, can I just do that? I don't think I can. So, the line separating the two fractions of the quantum was actually, wait, I'm going to do this. Hold on. I'm getting it. No. Uh-huh. And then we go up here. And then it ends right before there. Boom. Why did that not work? You know, whatever, I'll draw it by hand. So it starts right before the two colonies. The colonies are staying on the hyperdoll side. Then the line goes through the middle. Then we realized the line was not even, and they just gave up a bunch of extra stuff before crash landing into the corner. Does that sound fair? Too bad. And then there's this colony that's just got made out of nowhere as well. We call him us, Lesotho 2. So, Sotho 2, like any nation that would be um, inside another nation, kills itself. Wait, it's not accurate because Lesotho doesn't do that. Okay, whatever. Next plot point. So, the divisions kind of fray out at some points. And so Wyoming tries to capture, like, some land near it. But this just becomes the state of Maine. But then the state of Maine renames itself the Birdwing. And so Birdwing breaks free with the help from, from some land from Goomba and takes over Wyoming, becoming Bird. Now, Bird is really strong here. Bird could do basically anything. So, Bird wants to take over Barbea. Or Barbobia. Whatever I said earlier. But then, <laughs> the new tool gets introduced in poor images. <laughs> X6 Noob Slayer. <laughs> the... The nation of XX Noob Slayer gets added to the mix. Uh, we're gonna make it long. Just a little smaller. So, <laughs> sure, whatever. The the nation of XXXX Noob, Noob Slayer, Noob Slayer, yeah. That's the name. Stick with it. It's It has pretty thick borders, not gonna lie, goddamn, as some would say. Um... It's basic. It's a clock system. It's just telling us the time. Uh, how many hours till insanity? So, the thick borders almost caused the border bird. Now, SX Noob Slayer doesn't really want this. So, he calls upon the the locals down here in the corner. But wait, the corners. The corner pieces are very valuable, suddenly. Also, what happened to this? There's supposed to be legs. This T is supposed to be gone. What the barnacles happened? So, Hyperdoll puts out some red stuff over here just to take the corner with the red corner. And then the red corner expands a lot. Because it's Hyperdoll's little colony. Hyperdoll establishes some, uh, some personal boundaries. And 
and increases its personal values for some damn reason. And then just lets the red corner go at it. So the red corner, you know, goes at it. Takes a bunch of stuff this way. Then they take a bunch of stuff this way. Want to border their best friend in the world, Hyperdoll. So just carefully trace over this border. Trace next to this border. Whatever. And so, yeah. This is the part of the story where the Red Quarter Empire gets uh, admitted to the Hyperdoll. Oh my god, I keep messing up the border. The Hyperdoll and Company. Now you might be asking, what's the company? Well, the company is the uh, head empire factory. So, we need to repair this head first, actually. That's why the company's been going out of business. We need a new manager, which is what the Red Corner's... No, the Red Corner's the company itself. The Red Corner's like the... The giant Bass Bro shop, basically. Nobody gets that. <laughs> that's, that's the point. So... Down here is the factory, of course. Uh, this is where all the heads are going to be produced and used if necessary. This is the head colony. This is where the Hyperdoll infantry resides. They also uh, take some of the personal land. Hopefully that won't get on Hyperdoll's bad side. Then uh, the border colony is established. Oh, crap. The border colony is established to separate the Chunk Land, which is what this region is known as. Chunk Land. So, but the, both sides want to maintain good economic relationships, so they trade with each other. King, King gives a Hyperdoll, you know, some of uh, some of uh, good old Cha Ching, you know, good old Cha Ching. Good old cha -ching. And in return, Hyperdoll gives the <laughs> a square. <laughs> well, yeah, sure, a square. It gives him a great square. He puts it right in the middle of Chunk Land. So that will stay out of the way for most of the other uh, citizens here. Because it's going to be the citizens, though. Chunk Land is going to be where they put all their resources and stuff. You know, right next to the person who. Who they fought earlier. Totally not a bad idea. Anyways, Noob Slayer wants some more land. And also less chunky borders. So, I'm going to try to slowly revert that chunkiness. Oh my god, my nose is stuffy. There we go. Bird got a little spot in it. Don't know what happened there. Don't even know when, when that happened. This border got messed up. On purpose, maybe? Wait, what? The border was... You want sure? Yeah. This dot got created. That's just a micronation. Let me put the dot in there to show how small it is. Boom. So, Cloud Strife, right? He's still... He's still in the story. Wait, let me, let me just uh, update this to make it a little more accurate. The flooding has still... Still been going on. Some say because blood, that uh, it's the red corner influence. So they take it all the way. They take, they try to reduce the effects of the blood, which works. The blood stops eventually, and then they push back the blood using a simple tool known as napkin, and then the injury is sealed for good. And that is the end of arc one, the blood arc. No, I'm just kidding. Arc 1 was, uh... I don't know. Arc 1 was the banana arc. For real. Arc 2 was the communist arc, which, uh... You know, that's ended. Arc 3 is the, uh... The good arc. They have money, cha-ching, you know. And they have green square. So everything's good, right? Wrong. There's a middle... A middle kingdom that's trying to cause the two to go to war. And this, this thing got independent as well. We're at the border. So this middle kingdom, we're going to call it, uh... Let's see, let me go pull out my text. I'm going to call it Gar... 
Gartar Par Darfar Gartar Gartar Par Darfar is a great empire kingdom, sorry. My bad. And so what Gartar Pardar is Gartar Pardarfar Gartar Pardarfar's goal is to cause some chaos, cause some little tomfoolery. So, so, let me just uh, pull out my thing so I can undo this. So, Garda de Park Par's quick plan is to take over the stupid thing that got independent, then go after Noob Slayer, take the money, take the green square, which is going to upset the king, kill the king, kill Hyperdoll, kill the stupid minions, take over this, kill the guys up there, kill Goomba, kill Bird. And this guy right here. Somewhere within that. And then, you know. Everyone knows what happens after that. Kill everything. Kill themselves. They have to. And then blue. What? Okay, so, um. Guard of the Parfar starts by, um. This invasion. Their plan goes successfully at first. But only the step, first step, which is uh, take over the weakest thing there. I already forgot what their plan was. I think it was kill Noob Slayer first. Or get money. But only one with money right now is a Hyperdoll. So they want to make their own money. So they invest in trees. But there's only so limited green on the map. They have to go get green for somewhere. They could get green from Cloud. But no, they decide to waste their own military or economics by making their own tree. Brown brown's different. Brown's cheap. Anyone can make brown. Brown's brown's easy to get. That's why Goomba has it. Yeah, brown's easy. They see what they're doing and also set up their own thing. This time it's the Minecraft. So the cave was introduced. But if you're a member, you know to just go behind it and uh Get the get the free diamonds. They're always there. Lamal. So now, no Borbea, Noob Slayer, Hyper. No one. Nobody knows. Not even Garda Parfar or Goomba or Bird. No, not not even Guy knows for some reason. They kept this away from Guy. He finds out like eventually, but like he didn't. He doesn't even know at first. You're so. <laughs> In there. That was a horrible arrow. So now the diamond uh, monarchy has been set up by, or monopoly has been set up by the the common peoples. That's what I'm going to call them from now on. Bird gets kind of mad. And since Bird is Wyoming, they have no people. So, why am I still talking about them? They shouldn't even be in the series anymore. Oh crap, I killed. <laughs> that was not part of Bird, I just re remembered. So, tiny guy right here wants to expand. And so he does. He expands from his thick borders to less thick borders. Speaking of thick borders, Noob Slayer is starting to redo his, or undo his. God, I suck at English at 12. 1 a.m., excuse me. It is 1 a.m. on April 1st. I have like four four more videos of this to make, but whatever. Garden Parfar is good wood, so they want to go mining. But the only way to go mining is through this stupid cave. So they want to they start a war. So yeah, let me just uh, they go in right. They take this part first. They take all this. Uh huh. They go through there, but they're unsuccessful because the green block is just that powerful. Then they go through them, uh huh, around to here. But then they get almost get caught, so they just sneak into the cave and get some resources. Now this guy literally just saw him go into the cave, so he sets up an atomic bomb.
Garda Parfar loses their tree because they use it to make a pickaxe, but now that pickaxe is gone. So now it's the counter invasion from the from the commoners. I think that's what they're called. I forgot already. So they go in. Garda Parfar's capital city is like uh right right here at the top. Cause so they go in. They reach the capital city. Uh huh. Well, they can't take it. And then Noob Slayer helps them by killing all the forces here. So yeah, Noob Slayer is part of these guys' team, and Garda Parfar falls quickly. So let's just let's just go through the terms. Garda Parfar, the northern part, is going to break up. Gar Tar Dar Parfar King. I'm just going to keep Gar Kingdom out so I can make space. <coughs> so the break, small, the, the top part breaks up. I forgot what the border looked like. I'm just going to redraw it. So, the guy from earlier gets a lot of land. This kingdom gets introduced. It's called the Hyperdoll Supporters Kingdom. Uh, this bottom part also gets independence. It's called the the Green Square Protectorates. Uh, this one, this part just, uh, part just joins Noob Slayer. <coughs> Ugh. Don't know what that was. Anyways, this part gets uh, it's called the Freddy Fazbear Potai Kingdom, and um, last but not least, this kingdom gets called the Square Kingdom of All Roots Forty Nines. I'm just gonna label that right now. Actually, no, I need this to be longer. The Square Root Kingdom. Of all forty nines. Yes. This one's called Freddy Fazbear Bow Tie. Yeah, I forgot what I named this one. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to make it join Hyperdoll. Because so it's probably going to do that eventually anyways. Boom. Part of Hyperdoll. Part of the Minions Empire. But then, Minions. That gave them an idea. So, this guy, right here, expands to form the Minions Empire. And that gets us into the next chapter of the story. The... The Reign of All in Minions. This one's a short one, though, because Minions suck. It's so not going to make them that, that relevant. Yeah. That's about right. He a nerd for real. S. Billy... He's the minion in charge. He's the king. He is the king of the devil. He is the king of the devil, and he is the devil, so he's king of himself. And he likes minions. So, actually, let me fix this board real quick. So I can uh, tell the difference. This guy does indeed border guard to par far. And his main goal in the world is to destroy all these minions. Because it's past his time, you know. That's what he says. It's just part of his rhyme. I don't know. So he wants to... He needs resources because he's just a minion. How is a minion supposed to kill minions? 
Of course, the minions are... Okay, that was my meal. I should probably, like, turn that off. But I didn't. So, green square, right? Let's just go... Oh, no. Let's go... Okay, so, minion goes down here, right? Then he attacks, but then he circles around it, and literally no one's defending it, so he just takes it. Really, really that simple. So yeah, minion's empire is going pretty well. I don't even know what that was. So he has the green square now. So... He uses his famous, he famous, uh, famous phrase, you know, swiggle down, and it kills all the minions. These are exes; they're all dead. But two minions remain, and he's like, "It's past my time," and he kills the other two. And he's like, "I've lost all my minions," and dies as well. And it's the forty-minute mark, so remember these pixels from earlier? Yeah. Well, now we've ignored them, so they've grown to this size. And, uh, this size. They're like water balloons. They just expand. There's also a, there's also a purple one now as well. I'm going to slowly add colors of the rainbow. Anyways, this border's now useless. So they rebuild the border. And this time they hyperdoll don't want nothing to do with that. So, yes, they get added to that. Then the red corner gets revolted. And the orange is independent now. No, there's still attacks. Actually, I'm gonna fix that. Ooh, someone commented on my, my video. Okay. Uh huh. So I'm gonna just do it like this. So I can show the red attacks more coolery. So this red. The red attacks still continue even after the independence has been assured. But the orange does not give up. The orange fights back. And then it all just stops for some reason. I think it's because they... There's no peace treaty ever. Then when orange reaches the top, they just give up. And I think that's going to do it for this episode. Because I'm going to go check out the comment now. If you like this, I'll probably do it again. Also, why are you...